Forecast News is your gateway to all things blockchain. We do the deep dive and the due diligence on the blockchain projects and platforms that matter because we aim to be the most reliable source of intellectual discourse and insight that inform, educate, and bridge the gap between the blockchain industry and the mainstream. So here is Charles. Welcome. We are in conversation with Charles Hoskinson, founder of IOHK, which gave us Cardano. He is a Colorado-based entrepreneur. He's a mathematician. And IOHK gave us Cardano, which is a platform that aims to be better, smarter, and faster than everybody else. How? <laughs> so when I look at Cardano, I look at it kind of like a DARPA project. So back in 2015, uh, we said, where would we like the space to go over the next five years? And what's required for us to reach scale? So let's get to millions to billions of users. What's required for us to be interoperable with both legacy financial systems like credit cards and debit cards and banks and regulation? but as well as the new cryptocurrency space where we have thousands of blockchains, and how do we become sustainable, meaning that we actually have a model to pay for things, not just at the ICO or year one or year two, but year five, year 10, year 15. And we also have a governance model where we can actually decide where to take these protocols. Because there's a centralized infrastructure, you don't have a foundation or a committee or you know, some leader to say, oh, well, let's update it this way or adopt this thing. If it's truly decentralized, you need a completely different way of uh, having people coordinate work together. Uh, so that was very aspirational, you know, high-level goals. So what we did is we put together one of the largest team of scientists and engineers in the space, worked with many different universities, from people at Cambridge to Oxford to uh, people at uh, University of Edinburgh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, University of Athens. We wrote more than 40 papers, academic papers, uh, 20 of which have gone through peer review at major venues like CCS and crypto. And uh, then we took those papers and extracted from them formal uh, specifications, which then allowed us to actually implement the protocol with high assurance that it's built correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very unique project. Uh, it was kind of a high risk, high return project, very aspirational. And for three and a half years, we did lots of science. And uh, last year and this year, we've been now rolling out a lot of those innovations. And all throughout 2019, we'll be achieving great decentralization and uh, smart contracts. And 2020, we'll achieve the scale that we think can get us to millions to billions of users. All right, well, um, that is no small feat. <laughs> What is, the first, what is the first real case that you can point to that says, ah, this is the first step, this is the genesis of how we get there? So I think what needs to happen is that you need to create first a bridge between the permission blockchain space and the permissionless space. So right now we kind of have this bifurcation. So you look mm -hmm. at projects like IBM uh, Hyperledger Fabric uh, or like the Kadena or R3's Quarta project, and we say, oh, that's for enterprises, and that's for governments. And those are for things like supply chains, and voting systems, and property registration. And they're federated or centralized. And, and while they use some of the DNA of blockchain technology, they're definitely different, because the people who control those ledgers are, are kind of predecided, and they don't change too much. But then you look at open systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano, uh, those systems, they have dynamic quorums. So you know, people come and go. The people who were running this thing a month ago could be completely different than people today. And they're meant to be as open as possible, and, and no one's really in control of the destiny.